continuing our studies of CSS, we have noticed that we have added a bunch of styles. We call these embedded styles. All of these styles apply to everything on this web page, but obviously they don't apply to our index page. Our index page is still styleless. And as a website, we wanna make sure that we are consistent across all of our websites so that all of our pages should look consistent. They should be the same color scheme. They should look to the user like they have moved within the same space. And as a result, we should probably have these same styles on our home page. Well, I would argue that it's reasonable, maybe, to put this style sheet onto this embedded style onto our index page. And in fact, that would work because now my two pages look consistent. And so it follows that rule that it's consistent and my user is clear that because of the, the color scheme staying the same, that they're on the same website. And I would agree with that with one exception, and that is it's gonna get pretty uh, hard to maintain if I have many pages and I have to copy and paste this style sheet with all of these exact same um, styles on every single page. Because I want to keep them all consistent then, if I have to change the background color of one page, then I would have to go to every single page and copy that over. And that seems like from a maintenance standpoint that that's sort of unyieldy. That doesn't, that doesn't, sounds like a nightmare is what it sounds like. So I'm gonna take this style out of our index page uh, and I'm gonna go back to our stitch page and let's look at another type of style that we can employ in order to make this site a lot more manageable from a, from a, a cascading style sheet point of view. So remember, we have a style that we can put in line that applies just to this tag we can put an embedded style in our head tag, which applies to all but only this page. And then our last choice is an external style sheet. And so it is a page that exists outside of both HTML pages. So let's create that. So in my root folder here, I'm going to create a new file and I'm gonna call it by convention, it's either style or styles, either one. I'm gonna use the word style and then our uh, extension is .css for cascading style sheets. So that's what we're writing is CSS and I'm gonna hit the enter key now. So now I've created a CSS page. We have an HTML that stores all of our HTML and we have a style.css which is gonna store our CSS files. I mean our CSS styles. All right, so let's look and see how this works. So I'm going to collapse my project pane so that way I have a little bit more room here. Uh, I want to put these side by side so I can work on them together. It's a little bit easier if I can see them side by side. So I'm going to click on this tab and I'm going to click and drag this tab to the right or to the left, whichever works for you. And you can see that light gray rectangle. So when I see the light gray rectangle taking up half of this space, I'm going to let go of my mouse. And so now I have enabled myself to put these two files side by side so I can work on them simultaneously, kind of look at them without having to toggle back and forth. So it's just a little bit easier to manage this way. Okay, so what we want on our style CSS page is all of our styles. So let's see, I'm going to, first of all, do a comment block, control and forward slash. And right off the bat, you're gonna see that the comments are syntax, syntactically a little bit different than the comments were on the HTML file because this is a completely different language and so it has its own criteria for creating this block. I'm gonna hit the enter key because I can make a multi-line comment. Uh, I should always be putting my name down and I haven't been doing that, but I'm going to try to get into that habit of doing that in these videos. All right, and I'm, this is going to be our, what we call an external style sheet. And so the idea here is that this style page is going to store all of our styles that all of our HTML pages can share. So I'm going to come into the stitch.html and highlight all of the styles. Notice I didn't highlight the style tag, just the CSS styles. So I'm going to control X, copy or cut those out of my stitch page and paste them into my style sheet, my style.css page. So the first rule of thumb is that there can be no HTML on this page. No HTML, just all CSS. And this CSS can be validated and should be validated the same way we did our HTML. 
So there is, in fact, a validator. If you do CSS validator, you will find a special validator, just like we've done before for just plain old CSS, and that looks exactly the same as we've done before. Or if you're utilizing this extension that I provided to you, this will also validate your CSS. So if I click in this CSS folder and I click on validate, it will let me know if my CSS is valid. And it even says CSS file is valid. So this will validate our HTML. Let's do that. Validate our HTML. This HTML file is also valid. So syntactically, everything is, is doing what it's supposed to. Um, here is an example. Let's say for text decoration, I chose the value of, or I typed in the value of center. If I try to validate this now, I'm getting an error. The CSS is not valid. And if I put my cursor over this, it tells me that center is not a value, a proper value. It is not a valid choice for text decoration property. So this is an excellent tool for you to make sure that you are uh, syntactically doing what you're supposed to. And it helps you learn how to use these properties because you're gonna have to look it up or figure out, well, if center doesn't work, what does? So if I leave a semicolon off, that will also not validate. Let me clear this. So I've left a semicolon off of this line, and you can already see that it's not validating. Semicolon expected. So and it will not pass the validator. So very, very important that you're always validating your work. All right. So now uh, I think this just hasn't cleared itself out yet. So I'm going to clear my validation and start again, and it's all clear. Excellent. If you put any HTML onto your style sheet, I'm going to cut that HTML tags, the style tags, and put them on my style sheet. You can see that it is not validating. It is not valid to put any HTML tags on your CSS page. Only CSS goes on the CSS page. So that is invalid, and I'm going to take it off of this page. All right, so... Now, if we look at our, end, our stitch page, it has no styles because we pulled it off. It has no idea at this point that this style sheet exists and therefore is not applying any of the styles because we don't have any embedded styles. So the way that we access or we tell this web page, this HTML page, where to look for these styles is right here in the head tag. We're gonna create a tag and I'm gonna start typing the word link and you'll see that the editor is trying to help me out. Is Are you trying to do a CSS link? Yes, I am. So I'm going to click on that one. And you'll see some stuff already written out for you. When we are linking to an external style sheet, we want this attribute called REL, which is relationship equals style sheet. You're never going to change this. This is always going to be REL equals style sheet. And then the reference is the name of the style sheet that you created. Well, we created a style.css, which is the default, and so I'm going to keep it that way. If I had called it styles, plural, instead, then obviously I need to change that to styles. But that's not what I did. I had a style sheet. So we want to make sure that our link has the same file name as our actual style sheet. So I'm going to right-click and say format document, good habit to get into, get my link to line itself up to its siblings, and now let's see, we can see that our page has reflected our style sheet. Now we see all of our styles come back, which means that if we go to our index page and add that style sheet, that same way we did just a moment ago, link and then colon CSS and tab. I'm just using the editor's tools here. So I shortcut not having to type all of that out and hit tab. Relationship equals style sheet, href equals style.css. And now this is looking at that same style sheet. So the advantage to this is, is that for consistency, every page is gonna be looking at this style sheet for its styles. And so if for some reason I change the background color, maybe I change this to yellow just because I saw that come up first. So because the style sheet changed and both of those pages are looking at that style sheet, then it's reflected in all of the pages that are linked to it. So from a maintenance standpoint, that's gonna make it a lot easier for us to maintain this page. So typically we have a single style sheet that is shared by multiple uh, HTML pages for consistency and styling across our entire website. All right, so let's add some styles to, um, to what we already have existing. 
Um, I'm going to add to our H2. Let's see. We have, um, I'm on the stitch page, so let's look at stitch here. So I have an H2. Uh, I'm going to apply a style to my H2. So I have the selector, which is H2, the open and close curly brace. And I'm going to use one of these properties called font variant. And font variant gives me these choices. So it's hard to go wrong when you have a drop down of your only available choices. So I'm going to choose this small caps just to see what happens. And if we look at our um, H2, you'll see that it has what we call this the special style. All of the characters are capital, but the lowercase characters are still capital, but smaller. So that's kind of cool. So another thing you can do with selectors is select more than one at a time. So I could also select the H3s and do a font variant. So the same thing, font variant equals small caps. So I totally could do that, but this is repetitious. So we want to avoid repetition as much as possible, again, because it's difficult to maintain. If I change one and I need both of them changed, then I'd have to affect it in two places. So it turns out that, yes, that would work. But since these two are sharing the same style, I can do a comma and select two things at one time. So now I'm selecting both the H2 and the H3, and both of those are receiving whatever's inside these curly braces. In this case, it's the small caps. So that's all great. Now I want to introduce you to something called semantic tags. So there is my code block, and I'm going to write the word semantic tags. Okay, so semantic is a word that means if I look at something, it will automatically tell me what that something is. What does that mean? Well, let's kind of, like for example, let's just do an example. All right, so I'm going to come into my anchor tags here, and you and I just know that this is used for navigation. So we have a semantic tag that I can surround this anchor, these with. So I'm going to make a uh, semantic tag called nav. I'm not making that up. That is one of the tags that we can use. I'm going to, let's see, take this nav and surround it around my navigation. So my alignment isn't right. So I'm going to right click and choose format document. So let's see what it did to my page. Well, it didn't do anything to my page, right? It, my page is the same. So this tag, nav, doesn't do anything to my page per se, but first of all, it separates to you and your eye the fact that this is intuitively navigation. You can look at the word nav and recognize that this is most likely your navigational tools. But what it also does, so semantically it makes sense. If I look at that tag, it semantically, it makes sense. It kind of gives me a visual clue. It gives me a clue exactly of what is contained inside the open and enclosing tags. But what it does is it also gives me another selector. So I can apply a style to this nav that is going to surround my navigation. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to use that selector for nav and my open and close curly brace. And some of the options that I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose a property for background color. So let's do a background color of, uh, and I did look these up beforehand, so this isn't really random, but I'm going to choose this color, which gives us this kind of greenish color or teal color, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're going to do something called box shadow here. And box shadow is really kind of cool. Uh, let me just put some values in here so I'm not talking and trying to think at the same time. All right. All right. So what box shadow does is it provides a shadow around this navigation. So the navigation surrounds all of my anchor tags. So it's the navigation that's getting the styling. So it's not styling each individual anchor tag. It's styling this entire block. And this block then is getting a shadow a shadow, you can think of the word box and we'll look more about box shadows or boxes in the next next week. But for now, this is sort of a box that surrounds our anchor tags and that box is getting a background color. Well, these things are in the inside the box, so they are also part of that background color. And then we have this shadow and what these values mean is the first value is how far to the right do we want the shadow? How far down do we want the shadow? 
and how far, how much blur should it have? And then of course the color. So if you want to play with those values, you'll see different values being um, demonstrated. So if I put 15, then you can see how much further down that would be the down. This is to the right. So if I did, let's do something large just so you can see it. So 20 to the right, 20 pixels to the right, 15 pixels down. This is the blur. So let's do something like 35 just so we can see the blur. So you can see that you can adjust those values and the order matters. So this is to the right. This is to the bottom, how far down, and then this is your blur. So I'm going to put back the original values that I had. i just leave it there. That looks all right. Maybe not so much blur. Let's tone that one down a little bit. Anyway, you play with those values. Uh, it just gives a little bit more dimension to your navigation, to your semantic tag, to your semantic block. Uh, let's see. What else was I doing on the nav? Okay, that seems good. Okay, so that's one semantic tag. Let's add a different semantic tag. I have another semantic tag to add. Uh, I'm going to add a tag called footer, a semantic tag called footer. Now, I'm guessing that you can already look at that semantic tag footer and guess that that's something we're going to surround the H3 and the paragraph with. This is our footer type information. So again, I'm going to put the word footer here, and I'm going to move this content into my footer. And recognize that it hasn't done anything to my page, but it definitely gives me a block that I can select that is surrounding or containing this content. Uh, semantically, it gives me a clue that that should be placed at the bottom of my page. And I can provide some kind of styling to my footer. So I'm going to add border to this one. So uh, I'm going to add a one, let's do a two pixel border, two pixel. I have to provide a color and I'm going to uh, provide a black. And so what you're going to see that this does is exactly that. It's going to put a border around that block, that footer block that contains my H3 and my paragraphs. Okay, you can also do border dash top, bottom, left or right. So those are other values you might try. And that just gives me a border on the top. Okay, that seems good. So semantic tags then are special tags that are provided that gives us, a you the reader, a visual clue of what's contained inside the open and closed tag. By itself, it's not doing anything uh, as to our page, but it is providing us the ability to do some special styling to a block that surrounds that content. Now, I do need you to know that just because this is a footer, semantically, it makes sense to put it at the bottom of the page. It doesn't mean that you can't put it at the top of the page. This will still validate. It doesn't make sense semantically, so we don't usually find a footer at the top. And be very careful. Oftentimes, I'll see students think to themselves, well, there's a body, and so I'm going to put the footer underneath the body. Well, this isn't going to validate either because says even lets us know you always want to validate that the footer just because in your mind it goes at the bottom of a body it does not go underneath the body tag in our HTML remember everything that we want to show inside of our uh, HTML page needs to be inside the body tag so I'm going to right click on this and choose uh, format oh yep format again uh, oftentimes, I see students make the mistake of thinking that the nav goes in the head tag. Again, the nav is not something that should be in the head tag because this is something I actually want to display to the user. So where I, I would argue, yeah, but it's showing up in my web page, that doesn't make it right. It does not validate, and it is not where it belongs, and it'll give you the error there, and it's letting you know that that is not where that belongs. So the nav and the footer and all your semantic tags, again, to repeat itself, everything that we want to display on our web page needs to be inside the open and closed body tag. It needs to be indented, which mine is not. So once again, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go back to format document to make sure that everything is indented appropriately. All right, so I'm going to conclude this video with a link to W3 Schools. And I'm going to go to W3 Schools and I'm going to type in semantic tags, semantic tags. 
because it's not the intention of this video to teach you all of the semantic tags, but just to teach you what they are and how they work. So I see a link here to semantic elements, so I'm going to click on that. And this is a discussion of semantic tags. So there's more than just the one I used. So we used nav in this video, we've used footer, but there are many more that are available to us. And I think you should take some time to come and look at this page and experiment with some of, or learn what some of these other semantic tags offer you. So that is my conclusion for this video where we've talked about semantic tags and we've talked about pulling our styles to an external web page so that our uh, HTML documents can share the same styles so we don't have to keep repeating ourselves and we are, oh, we should put footers on the other page too. So let's just, well, I'll let you do that. So you want to make this page look consistent. So you want to put this um, navigate, excuse me, this footer in a footer tag and put this navigation in a nav tag. And we'll pick up from there in our next video.